guess we're on. I don't hear any sound of the set, so I'm just sitting here being stupid. Uh, this is the big show. Every two years, a great political observer, Bob Lovgren, you see him <laughs> on here, and I analyze the legislative races in the U.S. I take the Senate, he takes Congress, the House of Representatives. We forget the President. <laughs> Other people are talking yeah, about we, that. <laughs> we, we have no influence there. Yeah, right. Uh, so I, I'll start out because there are the a Senate, lot yeah. of Senate seats that are uh, mm -hmm. up for grabs. Right mm -hmm. now, the U.S. Senate is 51 Democrats and 49 Republicans. That's not the, quite right. Now 51 Democrats, there's four independents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever, that, whatever that means. But they vote Democrat. Yeah. That has caused, with Joe Manchin usually voting, the Democrat from West Virginia, usually mm -hmm. voting with the Republicans, that has caused our vice president to break more 50-50 ties than they say the, in history, but definitely in the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a lot of the bad legislation, you can blame on her too. Yeah. But uh, let's start out. I heard it was, they, she has uh, did 50% more than the guy who had the same at the Reichstag in Hitler's time. <laughs> go we, ahead. We I, don't, I made that up, by the way. Yeah, don't go low. <laughs> uh, Let's, let me give you a couple to start out with. The first one is West Virginia. It's always been a very conservative area. It's been represented by Joe Manchin, a Democrat, who's usually voted conservative. But it's had a two-term uh, governor, Jim Justice. He's running to replace Manchin and the polls show it to be a runaway. So there we're back to 50-50. Another race that seems to be a runaway is Montana, where uh, Senator Tesler has squeaked by for two or three terms. Yeah, I can't remember that, but he's more than one for sure. Yeah, he, he goes home and he's a Montanan. He's a cowboy, he's a farmer. Then he goes to Washington and has one of the more liberal voting records. Yeah. So he is being taken on by Tim Sheehy. Tim is a ex-Navy uh, SEAL. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Veteran, right. young. He's, I think, 41 or 42. Mm -hmm. And uh, the polls, everybody's saying that's going Republican. Mm -hmm. So we're up to 51. What do you have for Congress? What do I have? Oh, okay. Well, I got, it's really difficult to, to, um, to say. You know, there's 40, 435 seats. Right now the Republicans have, I think, 220. And the, the, the Democrats uh, have slightly less than that. And there's three open ones. You never really hear much about that stuff. When it gets to be, you know, right, you know, one, one person kind of thing, you know, all of a sudden it's, you know, they, want, they, can, they can take over, the Democrats can take over or whatever, you know. Or, Drop the drop the bomb on them, but um, uh, it's like I say, it's four four thirty five, and it's, it's very tight. So all, and most of those seats are just automatic, like the, like our seat here in in, in Santa Barbara. Uh, Salud Carbajal. I don't think I even run. Wash your ad. mouth out with soap. Pardon? Wash your mouth out with soap. Yeah, Salud. Right. Well, he is the he is the congressman, and I I think that he will. I'll give you a throw, throw something out here right now. I think that he will retire here pretty soon. He'll be vetted because he was he he was a uh, he was a um, we worked for the county in the first district. Then he became supervisor for the first district, first supervisorial district in Santa Barbara County. And then of course he's been in Congress now for oh well, got at least ten years and so on. And I think at at, the, at about twenty or something like that, you're fully vetted, something like that and so on. He's going to quit. And you know who's gonna go? He'll quit. He'll he'll come out and say that he's not gonna run, gonna run for another term. You know who's gonna kind of say that she's got, she's gonna run? Yeah, Laura Capps. All right. And she's right. And she's running for second district supervisor. Well, she, in two years. 
to the next election, uh, and that something like that, you know, just very well might happen. Um, but and that, but that's an automatic. Well, uh, there's a lot of places that automatically. Now there's a few seats um, that are in play. I wish I could show a, a, a graphic of it. You know, you, you look at these little co different colors of all the congressional districts and so on. Um, there's a few seats that look well. For example, there's two right along the border in Texas uh, that that are Democrat at the moment, but uh, that has changed. They're all of the uh, the seats along the border were were uh, Democrats. That's not true anymore. Now it's, uh, it's about only two left, and there's a few spots around the state too, and even, every state almost except those states that only have one representative to begin with: North Dakota, South Dakota. Uh, Wyoming and places like that, they're pretty much a straight, um, straight Republican in that. But the real key, I think, is going to be there's four seats in the state of California that were taken over by Republicans, taken back by Republicans. They're, they, we lost them in uh, 2020, uh, 2020, and uh, they got them back in uh, uh, 2020, two. See, they, 2020, 2022. 22. And the Republicans got them, you know, got them back. So there, and it wasn't the same people that were put out in, in 2020. That's a, a similar scenario to what happened in the state of New York, isn't it? That's what I was going to say. The next next one, but that, that Democrat in in New York, that was really something else. Well, let me finish what the other one is here in California. Three of the seats are up in the San Joaquin Valley. A lot of Latinos. Uh, and the, the, guy, the people that have those seats are, have Hispanic uh, heritage, basically. Uh, and the ones running against them, pretty much, is uh, the, the same thing. Now that, you know, because of, as, you've, uh, as, you said, as we know, the Hispanic population has become more um, Republican-oriented. These people, don't, now they just want to make a living. They just want to... Um, uh, you know that the politics. Well, I go I go down the list. You know, the, uh, Ronald Reagan said that, uh, re that the Hispanics are uh, Republicans and they don't they don't know it. I changed it, as you know. Uh, I changed it. There, uh, the Hispanics are Republicans and we don't know it. Right. And know it. Um, abortion. I can promise you, Hispanic population is not for abortion. Maybe the young, the younger people and so on. But the bottom line is that that's out. And then uh, religion, uh, very strong religiously. Uh, I'm sure they're for the death penalty. And I would tell you right now, if you call a, a Hispanic man something about a gay, you've risked your life. You, you may not make it out of the room <laughs> if you say that to somebody. Uh, little, little things like that. It pretty much is an economic thing for them. So that is, um, yeah, they, there's only, and what, there's three, it's three in the bottom, and there's one down in uh, the Orange County, Steel. They uh, have, hadn't discovered that the, uh, the Latinos don't want to be labeled Latinx, you know, like the unknown quantity. They mm. want to be Latino or Latina. Yeah. They, they want to be male and female, not. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. all that transgender stuff. And so the, yeah. so the Democrats playing into this wokeism have burned themselves with the Latinos in this state. I think they're, they're even more, more uh, uh, for the getting, you know, the, the, the immigration business. All these people come into the country, you know, they can work cheaper and they'll get, take over their jobs and things like that. Right. They are a threat to their economic uh, business in that. Yeah, and uh, you really hit it, the nail on the head. Can't, you know, you don't can't yes, because a, a lot of us, uh, uh, very little of the 11 million are Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> now they're coming from all over the world. Uh, but the Mexican people, they, well, they, they cross the border and so on. You don't have that a lot. In fact, we've come to a new thing with, Mex with uh, especially Mexican people that have immigrated here one time or another, back and forth and so on. They go back and forth, they have dual citizenship. They go back and forth to Mexico and they've, they've got a lot of relatives back there. A lady works for me, in fact, is down there right now. Her mother is very sick and she's, sta she's staying down. She's a citizen, by the way, uh, has citizenship. 
And I finally talked her into, I think, we're both going Republican. <laughs> anyway, uh, <coughs> but I don't know, it's a secret ballot, of course, supposedly. <coughs> the uh, interesting thing on the California border and also the Arizona border is there are Hispanics, I've been told, two million each day that come back and forth across the border right. for work and shopping and everything. They, right. They just, they don't have to go through uh, checks and everything. They're known to the yeah. Border Patrol uh, yeah. because they've, they've already qualified. So anyway, the people there in that, these three uh, uh, congressional districts up in the valley, basically up there, um, are, uh, well, these people are, they're the Republicans now. Uh, but they keep telling, they keep saying that they're pouring money into all of that stuff and so on. The Democrats are pouring money into those seats because they think they can take them over because they're only, the, the people that are currently serving have only been there for the two years. And then there's one down in Orange County, a woman named Steele. And I think, and then there's another one with that woman that ran, she was a congresswoman, a porter, and she was a congresswoman somewhere down in that area, but she decided to run for the Senate and lost. And so she lost, she's not running, so now that seat is open, and that could be Republican, uh, you know, because of, uh, she was, that Porter was a Democrat. Now, you mentioned, court, uh, you, you said the New York. That was the real surprise. Let me take a couple of senators, and okay. then we'll come to New York. All right. The, uh, I mentioned two seats that are just a given. Every pundit, every uh, political analyst has said that, that uh, Montana and West Virginia are Republican. Sh Sherrod Brown, Senator Sherrod Brown, has been two, approaching three terms. From Ohio. From Ohio. Right. I say approaching because some of these uh, people, uh, when they talk about their, in their third term, were appointed when there was a opening in their state, the governor appoints the, the uh, senator, and then they went to elections, so they're not there just 12 years, they may be 14 or 15 years. So, Sherrod Brown is challenged by Bernie Marino. He is a prominent businessman, philanthropist, and uh, all the polls show that uh, Brown is in trouble. Arizona. Democrat governor. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. He is, oh, yes, I do. Carrie Lake was running against him and they stole the election. 20,000 votes weren't allowed because of ballot machinery breakdowns. So now there's a Democrat governor. Uh, Oops. When there was a uh, uh, a resignation by the woman who was bisexual and a uh, independent Democrat. In fact, she re-registered as an independent uh, and that she chose not to run for re-election. Uh, the Democrat governor of Arizona appointed Congressman Ruben Gallego. And so he's there short term three, two years, and Kerry Lake, who ran for governor and should have won it, but, but again, 20,000 votes were lost uh, because polls closing at different times. Kerry will really beautify the U.S. Senate. She is a gorgeous ex uh, anchor on yeah. TV, and she is you know, people beautiful know woman yeah. in many ways. So uh, we have uh, probability and great hopes that she will uh, beat the incumbent uh, Democrat. There's a little known fact that I always preach. Incumbents usually win 80% in all well, offices. Yeah. But appointed incumbents seldom reach 50%. People just don't like their senator or in a county, a supervisor, being appointed. Well, they, they want well, to elect them. They don't them. appoint a, a congressman. Only senators are appointed by the governor. 
Yeah. Uh, if there's a congressman that dies, for example, uh, Walter Capps here in, so in Santa Barbara, they had to wait till some of this a special election, really. Right. There, nobody got nobody appointed Lois Capps. No. And uh, uh, she had to run the each time. I'll do one more and then throw it back to you for New York. Yeah. Jackie Rovin is a, uh, and she was originally appointed, mm -hmm. Democrat senator in Nevada. She won her second term narrowly. Yeah. Uh, she is up for re-election mm -hmm. and a ex-Navy SEAL, 40-year-old young man mm -hmm. with a good business record, Sam Brown, yeah. is going to beat her. Yeah. So we're out, I'm up to what, 50, 51, 52? I'm up to 53 Republican senators. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Um, but again, uh, well, take this uh, talk about Nevada for a minute. You know, here again is the Hispanic population there is huge. Uh, a lot of people I know, a lot of the people that came from even um, Isla Vista that lived out there, so that ended up moving to um, Nevada because it was a good opportunity for jobs, uh, you know, for jobs and so on and so forth. Uh, well, they wouldn't have to, you know, to, to work. And I think that, that a lot of that stuff, it, but it's changed, you know, I don't think, let's see, Nevada has gone Democratic, I think, for the last couple of pre presidential elections in that. Right. But again, here again, but there again, you know, you, you have women that, and, and men who, you know, talk about abortion. You're not going get to away, get away with anything in Nevada saying that uh, the abortion, we're going to change it and so on and so forth. Because that, there's, the Latinos will vote against it, period. They don't want, they don't want to see that. Uh, 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 like I say, well, uh, if you get married, if you if you get a girl pregnant in the Latino community, uh, there's no other option. If you decide that you well, you're not going to you know do it and so on, uh, if she has two brothers, you're getting married, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> or you're going in the Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you won't be around much longer. I, I get pretty that's pretty extreme, I suppose, but. But uh, it, it's, it's a tradition. It basically is a, is a tradition. Give me New York. Okay, you know, you know New York, uh, keep in mind that New York is the city of New York, which is democratic, you know, for, it'll be democratic for forever. Anybody, any, any, any city that elects AOC as the representative, representative you can bet, <laughs> It's pretty democratic at that point, and so on. I don't know, and she's you know she's Puerto Rican, or has so I think she is Puerto Rican, and comes from her family and, and that comes from Puerto Puerto Rico, but um, she uh, that's the Hispanic population there, and this, they, nonetheless they they elected her. By the way, I just to throw it out there, she is um, uh, was the bartender. Basically, yeah. she got a degree in the politics or something like that, physical, uh, whatever it was, and so on and so forth. But, but um, um, uh, she was just—that's all she was. Her, she had never held elect, elected office, as far as I know, in that. No. Nope. Um, and yet they, you know, very progressive, and uh, they, you know, they elected her. Now that's not the—and she's right in the city, you know, in the Bronx area. So that she'll, she'll almost for certainly get reelected, although. If you look at the first time she she won by eighty percent or something like that, and it's gotten down into the high sixties for for, uh, for for get 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 reelection and so on, but that's not a thing. But anyway, as far as the New York is concerned, it's it anything in New York City is uh, anything in anybody in New York City is a Democrat. Her district, she won as an insurgent against a. Standing, um, yeah, Democrat. <laughs> well, uh, and but he they, wasn't Hispanic. Uh, he was a uh, uh, what the whip, the Democrat House whip. He was mm -hmm. in the hierarchy. Yeah, and she came in and ran as an insurgent and shocked everybody by beating him by a few hundred votes. Yeah, right. But yeah. the next time out, she was the incumbent in a very safe Democrat right. district. Right. Right. I mean, I, it's, it's embarrassing, really, to some degree. That I would think for, to be to live in the district and having voted for her and all. Of course, she's very progressive, and I'm sure there's a lot of useful people. Again, as I said before, uh, Hispanic. When, when you come to young uh, Hispanics who are born here, um, uh, not, well, not necessarily born here even, 
but very, very young, they, they uh, tend to be a little more uh, progressive, the Democrats. But the, the point is that Denver, the, city of De the city of New York, uh, you, you forget about, I don't know how they elect the Republican uh, uh, mayors, they're all Bloomberg has, has changed well, the spots, it, I guess. Gets, it gets so bad yeah. that they get almost to bankruptcy and they turn to a Republican businessman. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That guy Adams, that's the mayor now, but I'll say, how, how is, he, is he being he is indicted? And he still yeah. holds office. He's still there. <laughs> I see him up there. Anyway, um, in fact, I think he was at the Madison, Madison Square Garden uh, with uh, Trump. I can't, well, maybe not. Anyway, but upstate, it's a whole different ball game. You go out, yeah, there's this uh, um, up uh, the Hudson Hudson uh, River, River Valley. There's one up one up there, and some other ones. One that's just outside of the city, but none, but it's just a suburb. But again, that that changed in this the, tw the 22 election, the tw 2022 election. That changed four seats in the state of New York were Democratic, and now they're Republican. And one uh, of them was close to the city on Staten Island. I think that I don't know. I don't know, know exactly how that's come out. I, well, I guess that's that's up for grab. I guess that's going to reelect that guy because he resigned uh, again. That and has had not has not been an election since. So, um, uh, but I would guess that that would probably there. Well, of course, Staten Island is a, is a part of the, uh, the city of New York, but it's it's different out there and so on. All the police officers live in Staten Island. <laughs> the police officers in the New York uh, PD. But a lot it, of them are anyway. And, but so that's going to be very difficult. And after that, boy, it, it, it gets to be different places. And as it once was, there's a couple. There's two. There's two seats in Florida still that are oh, wait, wait. Are, dem are, are Democratic. Let's finish New York. You talked about going up the Hudson. You get to Buffalo. Yeah. And. One of the great Republicans of all times started his political career as a congressman there, Jack yeah, Camp. Yeah, well, that was years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember meeting him down in uh, San Diego at the convention down there. He was a, uh, uh, he was up, I guess he was trying to become, uh, you know, for the presidency. He was not, I don't know, he, he was never nominated, but uh, he, you know, he ran for the, the vice presidential. And, so and of course, he was a football. Uh, coach or a player or both and so on that that helped a little bit too player. I suppose <laughs> it didn't help with the guy in Georgia what was the guy's name that uh, the uh, um, Heisman Trophy winner and all that stuff and so on he ran, ran for the Senate this last election oh, uh, Herschel Walker yeah Herschel Walker and so on that unfortunately didn't happen I don't think this is an aside I don't think Herschel Walker really had a chance he just he's uh, way out of his league <laughs> but in one of, I think Carolina's Tom, uh, Tutterville, a uh, famous coach, won the Senate seat. Maybe that was Alabama. It was Alabama. It, it yeah. was Alabama. He's yeah. and he is still there. He, he's, yeah. he's there. He, uh, and he's uh, he, he was the one that withheld his vote or something like that for for the uh, something or other. I can't remember what it was, but without his vote, they couldn't pass some <laughs> something in the in the Senate. I think it was the new debt ceiling or something like that. Well, what do you think? You pointed out. His Spanish shift and uh, um, in California. What do you think is causing those four Senate seats and I mean some congressional seats in yeah. New York? What, what's ca what's causing them to yeah. be Democrat to be to be Democratic or to be to Republican? elect Republicans and Democrats? I don't really seats. know. I haven't followed it that close. So I already don't know. I just know that it was a big surprise to the Democratic Party that those four seats were lost. Even the ones upstate and so on, but especially the one that was uh, was close close by. There was had been a Democratic you know seat for a long time. Long Island, which is also part of the city of New York, part of it at least, but that's also the other this, the the um, it would be the eastern end of, of uh, the Long Island is uh, is is very very Republican oriented too. Well, they have a. Uh, I want to be fair. Uh, but they have a governor that is obviously mentally challenged. Uh, yeah, yeah. And she can't. She tries to speak. But she got elected. <laughs> she was appointed well, the first time around. You have to remember. You have to remember. She beat a very popular Republican congressman by a few hundred votes, and uh, barely won. But she won. She was a, a, a congresswoman. 
Uh, co congressman. Oh, congressman. Yeah. Who was that? It'll come to me. Okay. Uh, he's, uh, he's, remember he was attacked, he was giving a speech and somebody came at him with a knife Yeah. and he took the guy down and uh, security came and uh, so uh, uh, it, maybe, maybe it has been about that. Yeah, uh, it has been. Uh, he's on Gutfeld once a month anyway. Uh, he uh, uh, it has New York State has been more competitive than it appears, yeah. and uh, again, it's because the Hudson River Valley and and Buffalo. They've had the, the the governor, however, on several occasions, the governors that were elected Democrats had to resign. Yeah, if you recall. <laughs> yeah, that was a strange thing. Yeah, that and uh, where is our uh, senator that is indicted and going to jail? Uh, uh, not Maryland. The, the the Democrat senator that had gold bars in his uh, closet. And no, that was Mendez. Mendez. Uh, Mendez. New Jersey. Was, uh, um, no, that was um, that is these. Uh, been convicted basically, and yeah. he, he's not running now. That's in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, has gold bars and uh, uh, very expensive vehicles. Yeah, and very expensive trips on private jet to. Uh, oh yeah, he's right in there with the best of them. Yeah, New Jersey, of course, as uh, you probably well know, it's a very political state. Uh, politics is. Uh, can very easily get out of you know people. They, they, well, like I said, like they like the Lyndon Johnson says that the, he, uh, uh, quoted uh, saying, if a politician serves any time past a certain couple of couple of things and so on and leaves office poor, he's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> and that's well, unfortunately for Lyndon Johnson. That was I heard that, that family still owns every station in the state of Texas. Right. Every license was given to, yeah, was given to, to Lady wife. Bird. Yeah, it was given to, to his wife. And I would guess this is still have it. TVM radio. They still have it. Yep. Uh, the, uh, you can't attack or, uh, criminals for being Democrats. That most of them are. But I always remember the guy in 1932, the Hoover delegate, the biggest criminal of all time, Republican delegate, Al Capone. Yeah, right, <laughs> Al Capone, right. <laughs> he, he just knew where to be at the right time. Yeah, yeah well, he, he had his own, well, again, yeah, so the politics, he, he, he couldn't have got away with the stuff that he was getting away with without paying, paying off some of the politics in Chicago. I come from Chicago, I know how that Democrat, you know, was. I vividly recall, we had, a, we had an apartment building and there was a tree out in front, and they came by one day to, to cut off, to cut down the tree. And my 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 mother, uh, with you know, we lived there, uh, the manager, and she says, so he knocked on her door and said, "Okay, we're going to cut the tree down, and you know who to vote for in the next election, then, don't you?" Uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Luckily, there's a secret ballot. She wasn't a Democrat. <laughs> well, I don't think so. Like maybe maybe she was. I'm not when, sure. When I was young in politics and had worked at the state legislature and around uh, the governorship, I uh, had people talk about dishonesty in government. And we've had scandals mainly at the local level in LA and San Francisco, but Al Song, a, a, a Democrat state senator, was indicted and uh, I think they gave him proba probation. But I used to tell young people, no, here's the difference. You're driving 100 miles an hour in California mm -hmm. and 100 miles an hour in Chicago. You get stopped in Chicago and you take your driver's license, put a $100 bill under it and give it to the policeman right. and he lets you go. Right. You, in California, same thing, you take it, the driver's license, put a hundred dollars yeah. bill yeah. under it, and you go to jail for bribery <laughs> or attempted and bribery. And he a hundred dollars too. I mean, not, maybe not. Maybe not. Any, anyway, yeah, now, that's a whole, they have difference. And yeah, like I say, in Chicago, you, you that the case again here. My another story to tell. My my dad 
came home from work every day, every day and he stopped at a bar. Uh, he was, he drank a lot of, he was a little alcoholic. He was, uh, he wasn't alcoholic basically. And uh, the police officer also, he parked his, this, the, the unit, the, the car, in back of the, the bar, and he'd go in the bar and get drunk. And he and other guys had to drive the car home with that guy in it to drive him home, to get a, get him, get a, get a, uh, the police didn't have a very good rep reputation in those days at least. Well, they're he was Irish too, by the way. <laughs> well, we had a... Well, that had to do with the Irish though. A famous story that we won't go into. We, a man, Irish, I mean, a Greek immigrant, moved here in his late 70s and 80s, retired as an auto used car dealer in San Leandro, California. Yeah. And he became uh, a gnat of on the shoulder of the city council. Mm -hmm. He was fighting them and they, he wouldn't pay attention when the three minutes was up. Yeah. And finally, Mayor Don McGilvery had a sergeant in the police there and kept arrest, arresting him. Mm -hmm. Gus Chevalis was his mm -hmm. name. He got elected. And really? Yeah. <laughs> no. and, and Who was that now, Gus? Gus Chevalis, and yeah. he spent... So he wasn't a Hispanic? No, he was Greek. Greek, okay, I thought he was Hispanic. No. But Quite the story is that Gus would get really blasted. Yeah, I know that, that, that. And a police officer would drive him home in the police car. Yeah. <laughs> he ended up hitting somebody, didn't he? But he still, got, still, he still held office, I think. Oh, yeah. He didn't have to resign. It goes back a long ways. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the commodity and... and uh, interface between people in power and law enforcement yeah. has always been interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's become more interesting since they've allowed police and fire and attorneys, uh, for government attorneys to unionize. Yeah. So now the enforcers are dealing with the people who give them the money for their budget yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, you know it's it really borders on a form of bribery uh, you know uh, you don't mess with a city council member right well, when, that, he's, yeah, that, when he may be the key vote on whether you get a 10 yeah, percent raise that's, that's the way it is i mean you can look, talk all you want about you know 100 years ago or 50 years ago and so on and so forth it's still the same to a large degree it's really the same like i always tell people they, 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 uh, they, you give money to a, to a, a candidate and so on, uh, and you're, where you're bribing them to do it. You're goddamn right I, that's what I did. <laughs> you know, the, what this guy, what, the, what was the guy in Arizona with the hotel? He had four senators and so on, and they asked him, he says, you, did, all, did you expect them to vote for him? Yes, I did. He's put him in jail, but <laughs> well, he had a, what was, the, what was that, uh, savings alone For the... Two legislators I worked with, wonderful, honest man, Bob Lugger Messino, mm -hmm. when he was in the state senate, Don McGilvery, former mayor here who spent three terms in the assembly. They were above reproach. Yeah. And yeah, Bob and, Lugger Messino was was a, a, an ex exception to a rule, but he he was he was a lot better better man than a lot of those other they, guys. Lobbyists, though. The different lobbyists gave big money to them mm -hmm. because they were incumbents. And people had asked me, well, does that affect their votes and everything? I said, the only thing it gets is an open door to have a discussion. And I've been there many times when the lobbyists come in, talk to the legislator, and they hear them out and then go vote against them. Yeah, right. And they still get. A big contribution the next time. That's right. I said they have to give the money to some politicians and so on. Like, yeah, I, I'm, it's for a reason. It's not that I think that he's going to he or she is going to change their mind, but I have access. Right. You want to talk to these politicians? They answer the phone. You can bet Donald Trump when when uh, Elon Musk calls up and so on. Don answers the phone. <laughs> 
and he will, hopefully with the president. I hope the guy, the guy, we're going to talk about that in another show here. Um, I hope that guy doesn't, doesn't take us an office in the, in the government, but stays the way it is. Elon Musk? Yeah, Elon Musk. The richest man in the world. How do you want to... You're talking about the billionaires and they're, they're buying people and so on. I'm going to do this for the next show, in fact. Buying people and so on. This is a guy that is his own country. And by the way, his entire family is very successful too, to the tune of a half of a trillion dollars they have on the books. Elon Musk? Elon Musk, right. He has a brother, a isn't sister, he an a man, African, and a, his father he, and mother are both rich. Isn't he an African-American? Well, not really. If you go look at it, Zone, he was educated. I guess he was born in South Africa, but he was educated at Pennsylvania, I think it was. Or, yeah, I, or, that, that or was back, a joke. Back around and so on. It doesn't matter. Now, we can talk about that another time. When we go on to sen senators, how about uh, Wisconsin and uh, Michigan? Okay, where am I? Uh, I got to Cary Lake, Nevada, Maryland. Baldwin and um, Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, She's the incumbent. Baldwin, yes, Wisconsin. Eric Hovind is running against her. again a young military entrepreneurial yeah. background, not a ex or sitting congressman. Yeah, and uh, she's a Jeopardy. They the yeah. polls show that he probably will win there. Uh, Pennsylvania is the one that you were. Curious about and d well, don't Michigan too. Yeah. Michigan is an open seat. Yep. Okay, you want to go there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Senator Stan Stan now Debbie Stan now. Yeah. Is retiring. Mm -hmm. A uh, Democrat Elise Sloven S L O T H E N. And he's a city congressman, I think, isn't he? No, it's a woman. Oh, okay, woman. Yeah, and uh, so she's a state yeah, congressman, right? And the Republicans have a real up-and-comer, Mike Rogers. Mm -hmm. He is a former congressman, but he didn't run for re-election. Yeah, but people will remember him because when he was in Congress for three terms, yeah, the Republicans took power, and he was the head of the Intelligence Committee. Yeah, so he would be on the TV. Sunday morning shows everywhere. So the state and, really knows who he is. Then, yeah. in other words, you're saying, yeah. And uh, and the he's, country knows who he is. And he yeah. has real life experience right. in, in the areas that we need our senators to know. Yeah. So that one of the areas. <laughs> yeah, that you call it. That's a really uh, seat that is in jeopardy for the Democrats. It's a big one that's kind of a bellwether, but maybe not, is Bob Casey, senator from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Now his father was governor for two terms and a senator, and then he got elected to the Senate and it will be his, he's running for the third. Right term. after that, right, right after yeah. his father yeah. left office, he yeah. took the seat. Yeah, okay. so he's, they're following in, his name and some of the pundits and the journalists laugh and say the people don't know that this isn't his father <laughs> it's just you know the Casey name just went on oh really okay the Casey yeah. name though he, yeah. he actually wasn't his father in other words yeah no it was his father Bob Casey yeah and now Bob Casey's this this guy who oh, okay. Bob but Jr. years have gone on um, the uh, Dave McCickvimik AIT. Anyway, uh, good ethnic name. Yeah, and uh, he's he, he has he's been uh, very aggressive, yeah. and he the the story. There is who's going to run, what Republican will get the most votes? Yeah, him against Casey or Trump against uh, what's her name? Yeah, right. And and uh, 
So it's kind well, of... That leads us right into the question then, is that the coattails. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're really saying. If, if Trump takes Pennsylvania, this guy has a very good chance. Well, but the pundits... I don't know if this, he endorsed this other guy. Do you, do you, oh, I'm yeah. sure he has. But yeah. the pundits are saying, if this guy wins the Senate, Trump has a good chance. Yeah. In other words, there, there's a cynicism of coattails. Well, okay. And but so, then, then you're saying that, you know, if this guy wins and he, well, it would very, be very unusual for him to win, the senator, as you're talking about, and Trump to lose, yeah. or vice versa, if Trump to win and the senator loses. Yeah, that, if, if Trump wins, he'll win. Yeah. And, if, as and if, what you just said, if, if he wins, Trump will win. Right. It's a question of who will get the most votes. So, uh, so I'll, throw us off, I'll throw you off a little bit here. Uh, talking about Trump, we only have a few minutes here. Um, talking about that and so on. Uh, they, they say that, that Pennsylvania is the key because they have 19 electoral votes and so on. Uh, if, that, if, then that, that whoever wins ten, Pennsylvania will win the election. And I, I hear that all the time. I can't, and just 19. Only 19, uh, well, I have electoral, that's not quite a few. But Georgia has 16, and North Carolina has 16. That's 32. And I'll, t I'll tell you right now, I'll bet you that Trump's going to win there. Because Elon Musk went down there and gave people stuff, you know, gave away this uh, use, use of his satellites and all that stuff and so on. And Trump was down there right off the bat. And then this... Um, uh, Harris and, uh, um, and, and Biden, I don't know if he even showed up down there. Oh, and... Uh, uh, I think the people in North Carolina and Georgia say, this is the guy we want because this, you know, they care about us. <laughs> and Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham, and uh, Shepard's uh, 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 watch were down there. So you had Musk, Billy Graham's son, and the president, uh, uh, yeah. they're all right away. Yeah. And it, back in the hinterlands where people were having a hard time getting in and yeah. getting going again, yeah. and one group delivering food and supplies, yeah. the, the religious group, yeah. Musk, as you say, delivering yeah. communication. Before FEMA even showed up, right? Yeah, delivering communication. They had no money. <laughs> and, and the people could see that uh, that uh, Trump, they, that those two were there because of Trump. That yeah. Those two wouldn't have been there in such force without Trump leading it. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be, uh, the, the, uh, there was a one group of journalists and even on the people who replaced uh, Rush on TV yeah. locally said, "Well, gee, that the the voters, the that state only went to uh, Trump uh, the last time by a hundred thousand votes, yeah. and seventy thousand have been wiped out by the the hurricane and the right, afterwards. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> that state's not only in play; probably Trump can't win it." Well, those people have already <laughs> voted heavy, more heavily <laughs> than they did in yeah. 2020. They've in already 2020. voted, right. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. That's what I say. I think, you know, that, 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 was, that was significant that they went down there and FEMA didn't have the money, so they didn't have any, you know, didn't have nothing to give. They ain't talking about this other guy. That, what are we, what is the guy's name that's head of that? Uh, not the FEMA, but they tried to impeach him, Marokoros or something like that. Who? I'm not sure. It starts with an M. Um, they tried to impeach him. He's a he's a sitting cabinet member, and he has oh, a, yeah. a, 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 a home home security yeah. position. Yeah, right. security. Which he deserves. He's a be uh, He couldn't can't even deliver. You know, some well, of the medical stuff that the people that are hurt, the house disappeared. They have no place to sleep. You're still going to have ten minutes or so for Congress, but I've got the 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 joke of the year, and that is the Democrats think they can win two Republican Senate seats. Yeah. Scott, <laughs> Senator Scott, in, yeah, who, who was a two-term governor. Yeah, you hear that all the time, yeah, so that, that, in, in, kid, that goodbye. In Florida, and he at one time was an independent, another time a Democrat, 
but he's a conservative Republican and very popular in the Senate. Now, who's this? Is Cruz or, or Smith? Huh? Cruz or a guy from um, uh, from Florida? Scott. Scott. Oh, yeah, Scott. Okay. Scott. I'm sorry. Yeah, Scott. But Ted Cruz, they think they can beat him in Texas. Yeah. And they always do think they can beat him. They pour. <coughs> they had that crazy guy yeah, run. That guy had, had an Irish name. Yeah. <laughs> he was Hispanic. <laughs> they don't even come close. Yeah. But Cruz is running scared. He, you, I'm sure you're getting emails. I'm getting every Republican registered voter in California and Nevada and Arizona. Are, yeah, that, that's what really gets me. You know, people that, down in Texas, I have my niece has just moved down there. I haven't talked talk to her about it, basically. But the people that say, we don't want any Californians to move in. Yeah. No, they're the ones that left California because they 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 not happy with it. Believe me, you you got Republicans moving in <laughs> moving into your state. Well, the one I know they're Republican. I know that the one My contrary niece. to that is the uh, uh, techno group moving from uh, the San Jose area from yeah. Santa Clara right into Austin, and they are the kind of people that are, right. Conservative Democrat, uh, conservative Republicans in Texas, they don't want them moving in because they're making Austin into a mini. Well, uh, they, they, they have no choice. They had to go where the company was going, yeah. I guess. But then again, you know, who knows what, what, else, what else happened. Well, the, uh, and um, I, I don't know. You know, Elon decided to, move, to, to lose it. And the fact is, it may, I don't know if I say it can't come back, as I guess I call him Frenchie Newsom. I think Frenchie is, uh, you know, that's a big loss. There's a lot of taxes, taxes stuff in just, just situations like that that they don't no longer have. And well, the state of California is hurting for money. Only because they're spending too much. They're getting right. plenty of tax money from Hollywood and Silicon Valley uh, uh, leftist entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, that always gets me when they talk about the budget. The, every every government they have a budget. They they dream up what they what they're supposed to get for the year, and then start of year starts coming in, and they didn't get it, but they already spent it. <laughs> they already did, decided that they, this is what they're going to do. Well, we you had, spend money when you have it, not when you you think you're going to have it. We had, we had a, the opposite problem in California this year. They had a budget. And because of the changes in capital gains, and, right. uh, and uh, they ended up with seventy million dollars more than they expected. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose that can that can happen too. But I, you know, <laughs> they're fighting and, over yeah, it. But even so, the next time they think you're going to get that again, and they don't get it. No, that's right. It's a yeah. one one time. Uh, like, like I just said, windfall. like I said, you spend money when you have it. If you have it, you know you're going to get this money. Then you can make a budget. What do you know, that's what they always talk about. Politics is not business. Yes, it is. <laughs> You're spending billions and billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, and so on. You better have some kind of business sense that you know what's what it's for, where it's going to go, and that you're going to be able to get it. Well, they uh, used to be in California that, that they had to have a balanced budget, no deficit spending. Right. They've worked around that with bonds. Yeah. And we're seeing it uh, uh, on our uh, election this time. Yeah. The number of different bond issues at state, local level, yeah. counties and cities yeah. are just an incredible amount of um, deficit spending. Yeah. Now, they uh, uh, lie about what a bond is because they just talk about the carry. That would be like talking about the equity in your home and only talking about the monthly payment. Yeah, you know, it's it's just uh, such a false uh, premise. Uh, so I have a I have a principle, and Mus Elon stated my principle. The last thing I'll wait, say. Wait, wait. No on all taxes. No on all bonds. Oh, that's me. That's my rule. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and they'll find a way to get it. You know, in the school districts and stuff like that, they'll find a way to get the money, like the city college bond issue and so on. This measure P, I guess it's called. 
Uh, they're going to want to get. Actually, what goes back, they they got they did pass a bond issue for twelve million dollars. So they came again for seventy five million. Didn't pass. Now they're back again, again to, to, to something something else. But I, I only have a few minutes here, so let, that's a. Uh, I'll just say for for the last for c c Congress people, um, if you wish you had a map, there'll be some surprises. There will be surprises in different places. Um, of uh, in the congressional uh, seats and so on, it might be just as surprised as Republicans and Democrats. A Democrat takes over a Republican seat, and a Republican takes over a Democratic seat. It has a lot to do, however, with the coattails. You know, uh, if Trump, would, you know, especially in Trump's that and states that he's taken, basically, I mean, all the southern states and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, people, I, I got yeah. I've read different things over, over the years that say that people vote one way. If they're a Republican, they're conservative, or they're like they have the same eye. They don't vote for one Republican and then vote, vote the Democratic congressman or a congressperson, uh, or, or vice versa. They vote for the, the Republican ticket, basically. Party. Yeah. And they're encouraged to do so by the, by the party. Just vote Republican so or Democrat. Do they? Republicans hold the House. Do they increase their majority there? I really couldn't say. Um, I think they'll. I can always tell people what I want to happen and what I and I and, and what I think is going to happen are two probably two different things. I want it to happen. I don't know how many seats I can get. Of course, you know what happened in '22. <laughs> we thought we were going to get 35 seats or 30 seats and so on, and ended up just barely uh, taking over the House. Luckily, but. Um, I would say that it's just up, it's up for grabs, basically, and it has a lot to do with California, the four seats here, and then the four seats in, in New York. Uh, that's that they're all on the on the, the uh, tough, what do you call it, toss up? They all those eight seats are on the toss up schedule. Put it that way. In the nine Senate seats I spoke to, if uh, and it's possible. Uh, depending on coattails, that we run the table. I have a prediction that everybody laughs at, and it comes from my theory that uh, celebrity is the main factor in voting. If there's a celebrity, they're going to win because the average voter goes in and they're a Republican, they may vote Republican, Democrats vote Democrat. <laughs> The campaigns think we spent a hundred million dollars. That's going to persuade them. No, per, no persuading by. Well, what, what's who's the celebrity in this? Uh... Steve Garvey. Oh, Steve He's, Garvey, he, right? He is the outside. He, uh, he'll, uh, you know, he, I, I don't know what will happen because it's such a democratic state. But voting for that, excuse my language, that guy from Burbank, and so what a crook that guy is. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, Jesus, he, he knows how to. Knows how to uh, uh, I, do it. No, I, I have I think he has. And let's face it too. We'll throw this in at the last and so on. There's always the Bruce Hirschelson theory, the uh, thing that can right. happen. And you know what happened in, in, in that was uh, what was that's her name, the, the, the senator Feinstein. The, no, no, the other one. Oh, boxer, boxer, boxer. Yeah, boxer. Her nephew did a show here, in fact, for years. Anyway, the, Saturday. Uh, the Saturday before the election on Tuesday, she, he came, uh, she came out with the fact that that uh, Hershenson, Bruce Hershenson, who was thought to, he was leading in the polls, uh, went to girly shows, and all, it was all over. And of course, they, they only had really three days to respond. Turned out he went to, went to girly shows with his wife. Hershenson <laughs> took his wife with him, uh -huh. with another couple that had been there, something like that. But uh, Hershenson lost. Well, you know, you know, it, it never, the election's never over until Monday night, put it that way. Except, I, of course, a lot of people have already voted. I can prove that celebrity is the main factor in politics. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to take the last four minutes, but yeah. uh, George Murphy, 1964. Who was that? George Murphy, Senator George. Oh Murphy. yeah, yeah, right. Sure. Barry Gold, Goldwater was losing California <coughs> by f almost forty percent. Yeah, the song and dance man they called him. He was right. an actor and right. and wins at the same time. Next comes a little known 
B, I think, for actor who had given some political commentary and gave a great speech, Ron Reagan. Wow, yeah, yeah. right. And, and, yeah. But again, no political background or anything. Well, he had been governor of the state of California. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm that. talking about him getting elected governor. Yeah. Uh, okay. How did he get elected governor against, uh, uh, I think the guy's name was Powers. He was a state senate by minority and majority leader back and forth. Right, yeah. And here, Ron Reagan files and beats him yeah. the, in the Republican primary. Yeah. So we have to watch in every race the factor of personality and the factor of uh, publicity, you know, position. You've got two minutes. There's polls, all these different polls, right, and so on. There's only one poll that counts. <laughs> it's in the millions, and it counts, and uh, that's it. That's it. That's an election. They talk about democracy. Democracy, how they're gonna, they're, uh, uh, is in trouble. Yes, it's always in trouble. It's a test. Every time we have an election, it's a test of democracy, and we and we live with it. So that it, you know, it, something happens. And again, one of those things has been a lot of surprise elections. Uh, it's got got a surprise to get elections like 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 uh, Reagan, for example, Ron, Ron Ron Reagan, Ronald Reagan, and others, and so on. So when you ask me what my think what possibilities is, um, I wouldn't bet against it. Put it that way. Donald Trump may, and I hope he is the reelected president. And I hope they keep the hunk. And I know they'll keep the Senate. That the, the Republicans will take over the Senate. Yeah, well, the, the, the Senate class, it's called, every three yeah. years, uh, almost dictates that the Republicans end up with 52, 53. Yeah. I'm betting 56 senators, yeah. and uh, that's without Garvey. And I, uh, I just, the momentum, the joy, and not the joy isn't in cacklers, uh, campaign, yeah. the joy and fun is in Trump's campaign. You don't leave out that word joy. I don't like that word joy anymore. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'll predict right now that Donald Trump will get 52 percent of the popular vote and, yeah. and about 320 uh, electoral votes. And I'll bet they'll say it's a, it's a they would put up they would he, he stole the, he stole the election. Yeah, not the same thing. Well, that's why the Russians will come back with all. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why we hope that either yeah. there's a big victory for someone, or a big loss. Yeah. So, so the crazies don't go into the streets. We don't want it to be. I'm afraid that might be the. the, the, the yeah, that'll not happen. I think they're going to go in the streets if. if uh...